Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie, and in this video, I'm going to explain to you, uh, continue explaining to you the ER model with specialization, generalization, and aggregation. And I'm also going to explain to you an object-oriented model. So let's begin. What is a specialization? So here, there's a diagram that I've given and this is the diagram of specialization and I'm going to tell you what it is. So specialization is a refinement from an initial entity set into successive levels of entity uh, subgroupings in a top-down manner. So for example, if you're designing a database for a university and initially you only recognized a person entity set, but then after creating the person entity set, you realized that every person does not have a salary uh, or total number of credits because um, every person, for example, uh, may be a different entity. Like if a person is an employee, then uh, he or she could have a salary, but not total credits. And if the person were a student, uh, he or she would have uh, total credits but not salary. So you decided to then classify person into student and employee. So this classification would be called specialization and then you can further classify an employee into uh, an instructor and a secretary because uh, they too have attributes that are different. For example, an instructor is having a rank attribute that's not available with a secretary and secretary is having number of total number of hours per week, which is not the case for an instructor. So this concept of a top-down approach where from the top you start refining and creating more entities, classifying, that is known as specialization. An entity set may include subgroupings of entities that are distinct in some way from other entities in the set. This distinction is because of the attributes. Like I said, uh, employee is having salary, but student does not have salary. And same with total credits. Student has total credits, but employee does not have it. Now, just like you have generalization, the opposite of that is, uh, just like you have specialization, the opposite of that is generalization, which is um, an approach where you begin from the bottom instead of the top. So designing in a bottom-up manner in which multiple entity sets are synthesized into a higher level entity set on the basis of common features. So that would be generalization. So you would start uh, right from the bottom and then move upwards. So for example, um, while creating your database, if you first identified that you have to um, entities, employee and student. And so you created only two entities, employee and student, and added all these attributes. You know, for employee, you added ID, name, address, and salary. And for student, you added ID, name, address, and total credits. But then when you look at those, you'll realize that a student and employee, they have a lot of common attributes. So why not collect all the common attributes, you know, because um, if there are lots of common attributes and you, you create a diagram, then diagram would be really big because you're repeating so many attributes. But instead, because there are common attributes, you could merge them into an entity set and put it on a level above employee and student and put those attributes on that higher entity set. That would be generalization. So it's just the way you think. If you are thinking from the top to bottom, it is specialization. But if you're thinking from bottom to top, then that is a generalization approach. Now the commonalities can be expressed by generalization. And for all practical purposes, generalization is a simple inversion of specialization. You don't have to do anything special. Uh, in the diagram itself. The diagram remains as it is. There's no change whether you're showing specialization or generalization. 
Generalization is used to emphasize uh, similarities among lower level entity sets and also to hide the differences. So this would uh, this is what generalization is. It also permits an economy of representation in that shared attributes are not repeated. So like I said before, if uh, you perform generalization, then all the attributes which are shared, you don't have to go on drawing them over and over again because you just draw them once for a higher level entity set. So it uh, gives you an economy of uh, representation. Now there are types of generalization and specialization. We are going to see those now. The first type is an overlapping one where an entity may belong to multiple specialized entity set. Uh, for example, in a university, you might be having somebody who is a student as well as an employee. Maybe that student is working on campus for some uh, post for the post of a librarian or you know, maybe the cleaning staff or somewhere in the canteen. So all these things uh, can be combined. And so one student could also be an employee. And uh, let's just take an example. If you have a student ABC who is a student as well as an employee, then the data of ABC will be present not just in the student table, but also in the employee table. So such a generalization or specialization where although you have separated two entities, there are some uh, overlappings between them. That is known as an overlapping generalization or specialization. And to show that it is overlapping in the diagram, we do it by showing two arrows. So you can see here there are two arrows, one arrow, uh, I mean two arrows, both the arrows are having hollow, uh, hollow arrows. Generally, it is expressed using hollow arrows. We never color those arrows. They are called hollow arrows. And um, they are two separate arrows. The next type of uh, generalization or specialization is called a disjoint one, where one entity may belong to at most one specialized entity set. For example, a person who's an employee uh, cannot be an instructor and secretary both at the same time. And so you would be putting an employee only in the instructor part or in the secretary part, not in both. And this type of a specialization would be disjoint. To show that, we would be putting one single hollow arrow instead of two separate ones like we did in overlapping ones. So this is one single hollow arrow. And from that one arrow, we will create the specializations. This is the last concept in an ER model. It is aggregation. An aggregation, you can say that it is a form of a quaternary relationship shown in a better way. So aggregation is an abstraction through which relationships are treated as higher level entities. And it is used to express relationships among relationships. So if you have one relationship and you want to express relationship of that relationship set with another one, then that, that is what aggregation will help you to uh, do. Now in this diagram, there is a ternary relationship between instructor, student and uh, project, which is called project guide. But along with this, I also want to store, I also want to uh, provide information about um, what is the evaluation? What marks did the instructor give to that student for that particular project? And not just marks, but maybe some comments, how to improve and you know some grades and uh, things of that sort. If I want to give that, maybe a monthly evaluation or weekly evaluation, then for that, I would have to create another entity set. And once I create another entity set, I can um, store it like that. But the problem here is if I have created another entity set, then it would become a quaternary relationship. And quaternary relationships are fine, but they don't really make a lot of sense when you try to put them in the diagram. And so the best way to do this is to combine the three 
relation uh, three entities that you have draw a box over them and then attach a fourth entity set with it uh, by another relationship so you can say that this eval for uh, relationship that you see here is actually attached with project guide not with uh, an entity set that is why you can say aggregation allows you to create relationships among relationships we regard the relationship set which is project underscore guide relating the entity sets instructor student and project as a higher level entity set called project guide so project underscore guide is a higher level entity set in this although it is a relationship we regard it as higher level entity because otherwise i would have to just add a lot of descriptive attributes with project guide you know grade and the date on which evaluation was done uh, for each and every instructor student project triplet i would have to add so many descriptive attributes and that doesn't make sense maybe one or two descriptive attributes make sense but adding several does not make sense so instead you could just create another entity and then create another relationship and attach it with that so here the relationship set project underscore guide is treated just for the aggregation purpose as another entity set instead of a relationship set and then the relationship that is actually created between project underscore guide and eval for is a binary relationship not a quaternary one because as such you are only connecting two entity sets because in aggregation project underscore guide is considered as an entity set so you're just connecting one entity set with another one so it's a binary relationship eval for now we are going to proceed uh, and yeah i would also like to mention that that's all you need to know about er diagrams with those symbols you can make any er diagram that you will that you want and now we are going to see one more one last uh, data model in dbms which is object oriented data model it looks something like this this is mainly used in uh, programming languages which are object oriented uh, like c++ and java and python and other languages so uh, it just defines you know which which are the different uh, classes available and then for those classes uh, what are the different objects inside and then the, for those objects you know uh, what are the different methods so that's an object oriented model here if you try to compare it with an er model then in er model we have entities those entities in object oriented models are called objects and objects have properties and methods and a class is a collection of similar types of objects so when some objects together are similar, then we create a class out of those. Now let's see the analogy between an object-oriented model and a relational model. So in this, a class is used instead of relations. So whatever you were describing as tables, here you will be describing that as a class. An object is used instead of tuple. Tuples are rows. So instead of rows, we would be having objects. And um, properties are used instead of attributes. So instead of the columns in the table, we call them properties. Methods are used instead of stored procedures. Now you might not know at this point what a stored procedure is uh, because uh, it's not yet uh, available stored procedures is something you will learn in uh, plsql which is a procedural language sql a programming language that you can use uh, with a database so in that you'll study what a procedure is it's basically a function that allows you to um, 
repeat your code without having to write it again. And so that's what a procedure stored procedure is. And in an object oriented model, we just create a class. Uh, like you can see here, there's a class, there's a class called um, customer and with customer, there are several uh, objects. You will be creating several objects of customer. For example, if you have a customer and uh, you want to store his or her data, then that would be an object. And customer is having properties uh, which are present right in the box after customer. And also there are some methods associated with customer, like you want to get the full name of customer, get the address, all those things. And then you can see this zero one done for the connection between customer and another uh, class, which is actually showing to you uh, the relationship between customer and address. So that is how you can show a relationship, just like an ER model. Uh, you can draw a line and show relationship. So that's how the object oriented model looks. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.